this episode, we'll be looking at the structure of the universe. One of the first questions we should probably tackle is what exactly is the universe? So our universe can be considered to be everything. That's all the matter, all the energy, and all of the empty space. Those things make up our universe. How long has the universe been the universe? The universe is said to have started with a Big Bang event. And this event was a rapid expansion that formed the known universe, and that probably occurred sometime between 13 to 15 billion years ago. The universe is composed of different parts. Those parts are galaxies, stars, planets, moons, asteroids, and comets. Let's take a look at one of those components. We'll start with galaxies. Galaxies are clusters of billions of stars held together by gravity. The basic structure of matter in the universe is the galaxy. Galaxies are collections of billions of stars, but in addition to that, gases and dust all held together by gravity. An average galaxy is somewhere over a hundred billion stars, and there are probably over a hundred billion galaxies. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is a spiral-shaped galaxy with over 200 billion stars, and our Sun is located somewhere between the outer uh, spiral arms outside of the galactic center. Other galaxies have elliptical shapes or unusual shapes that really help us classify them and put them into different age categories. Let's move on to another component of our universe, stars. Stars are massive balls of gas that create energy through nuclear fusion. When we look out into space, stars make up a majority of the visible matter in a galaxy. A star is a large ball of gas held together by gravity that produces a tremendous amount of energy. Our sun is the dominant gravitational force in our solar system that holds all the planets in space. Stars create energy by the process of nuclear fusion and do so for billions of years. When that energy eventually runs out, some stars die in a dramatic fashion. We call that a supernova. And when that occurs, the star explodes, releasing all kinds of elements and materials that are necessary for building planets, building moons, building other stars, and even building life. Our next component are planets. Planets are nearly spherical objects that orbit, which means move, around a star. In our solar system, planets orbit the sun. Each planet has unique characteristics based on how it formed and where it is relative to the sun. Planets can either be rocky or terrestrial or gaseous, Jovian. In addition to our eight well-known and well-described planets, there are actually several dwarf planets orbiting the sun. You don't always hear about them. There are also planets or outside of our solar system called exoplanets. One of the most famous exoplanets recently discovered is one called Kepler 22b. Um, it was discovered using very powerful telescopes and advanced technique that help reveal its location, but Kepler 22b is an exoplanet similar to Earth in its distance from the nearest star, Kepler 22, and could potentially be a planet with life. Up to a thousand planets have been found revolving stars other than our sun. We call those exoplanets, and they represent opportunities for us to learn more about how planets become habitable. Our next component are moons. Moons are also nearly spherical objects that move or orbit around planets. A moon is a body that orbits a planet or an asteroid as those objects are orbiting the sun. In our solar system, there are approximately 175 known moons, which vary in size from larger than the smallest planets to only a few kilometers in diameter. As we learn more about our solar system, 
we plan to visit different moons of distant planets so we can get a better understanding of what is on those moons. Some of the moons, like the moons of Saturn, um, like specifically Titan, could potentially have ice and could potentially have water somewhere trapped beneath its surface. So our moons in our own solar system hold a lot of clues to our own universe. Our next component are asteroids. Asteroids are irregular rock objects that orbit a star and they do so often in large belts. An asteroid is a solid rocky and or metallic body that independently orbits the Sun. Asteroids have irregular shapes except for the large ones which are spherical but they don't have an atmosphere. A large percentage of the thousands of known asteroids are in orbits between Mars and Jupiter. Asteroids are small planets and are sometimes often called minor planets. Regardless, asteroids can have a huge impact on our planet. Just a little tug of gravity sends an asteroid hurtling towards our planet, which can cause devastating uh, circumstances. Our next component are comets. Comets are masses of ice that orbit a star along very oval paths, very elliptical paths. A comet is often compared, oops, a comet is often compared to a dirty snowball. Comets are mainly composed of snow, of snow. <laughs> a comet is often compared to a dirty snowball. Comets are mainly composed of solids that easily change to gases when heated. They are largely ices of substances such as water and methane mixed with rocky or metallic solids. Most comets are 1 to 100 kilometers in diameter, so not very big. When comets get near the sun, some of their ices turn to gas. This is a process called sublimation. Some solids are released and they form visible tails as seen in these pictures. The picture on the far right is one of the most famous comets. It's Halley's Comet. And Halley's Comet has a uh, orbit around the sun that places it in our viewing position of Earth every 75 years. So the last time we saw Halley's Comet was back in, I think, 1989. And it will come back around 75 years from that date. So how does all this fit together? How does our universe really wind up being laid out? So we have to start, obviously, with the universe. That's the biggest thing. Next, we have galaxies, because the universe is really made up of billions of galaxies. And then in those galaxies, we have probably billions of solar systems. And each of those solar systems is con composed of maybe one or more stars and also in those solar systems we have planets but in addition to planets orbiting the star there are asteroids and there are comets and then finally orbiting individual planets we have moons so that's the structure of our universe thanks for watching